What can the events of history tell us about why obesity is a human epidemic? How has food evolved over time and how have we as humans responded to that change? What are some other factors that determine the health of a nation and how do they relate to the evolution of food and active living? Evolution, what is it? The idea that regardless of religious or cultural background, individuals and groups of objects change over time in response to natural selection. Natural selection, survival of the fittest, the idea that if something cannot adapt to its environment, it cannot succeed. Let's take a look at how these different aspects of society have had an effect on human health. Environmental, the way that agricultural systems have affected our environment and the communities we live in. What is environment? A physical environment is surroundings that include objects, conditions, and ideas. Social environment is the culture that an individual lives in and the people and institutions with whom they interact. A built environment are the constructed surroundings that provide a setting for human activity, ranging from large-scale civic surroundings to personal space. How have our interactions with the environment changed over time? We began as hunter-gatherers with little impact on the environment. The Neolithic Revolution led to population expansion with an increase in waste and physical infrastructure. North America was largely undeveloped when the pilgrims arrived in the 1700s. And finally, the Industrial Revolution led to a major increase in population, urbanization, and industrial agriculture, which continues today. Technology the way that science, media, and technological advancements have affected our diets and lifestyles. Technology was scarce before the Neolithic Revolution. When tools were developed for agriculture and trade, people created irrigation and drainage systems to support their communities. Agricultural practices became more advanced as increased trade brought communities into contact with different cultures. The 19th and 20th century saw extensive advancement in the food industry, including tin cans, frozen foods, and microwaves. It also saw the beginnings of cars, television, diet pills, video games, and the internet. Today, humans make on average 250 decisions on what to eat and what not to eat per day. How do you think technology and media have impacted your health? Biological. The effects of technology and environmental manipulation on the structure of our food and the prevalence of disease, as well as the economic benefits of genetically modified foods. Genetically modified foods are foods whose genetics have been altered for them to be more appealing to the consumer. Until the Neolithic Revolution, hunter-gatherers ate primarily raw ingredients. With the birth of agriculture, multi-use crops such as corn were produced to support the large population increase. As a result of these high rates of population growth, diseases such as smallpox, measles, the black plague, and yellow fever became major threats to humans and animals. In the turn of the 19th century, Technology focused on changing the biological structure of food in order to meet the great demands of growing populations. This resulted in the invention of cornstarch, high fructose corn syrup, corn flakes, and condensed soup in the 19th century. Canned vegetables, amphetamine diet pills, and GMOs such as TV dinners and cake mixes were introduced in the 20th century. Also in the 20th century, diabetes rates in the United States increased by sixfold. Today, one out of three adults in the United States is considered obese. Obesity is one of the top preventable causes of death in our country and causes other major health concerns such as osteoarthritis, diabetes, cancers, and asthma. Politics. The way that government has power over our access to food and active living, and the connection between government and the structuring of our environments and communities. After the Neolithic Revolution, more complex social systems were brought around agricultural communities. These systems developed patterns of trade that brought them into contact with different cultures, sparking colonization and expansion, which in some cases led to extreme corruption that negatively impacted citizens' access to food and resources. In the United States, early presidents were concerned with physical activity among young people, as well as home economics and professional development for women in education and the food industry. During the 20th century, funding for nutrition and physical education was cut during the Great Depression, encouraged by JFK, Truman, and Johnson, only to be discouraged by Reagan and has been in limbo ever since. Progress has been made with the requirements for food labeling, as well as the standardization of our diets, like with the USDA's food pyramid programs. Today, as passed every five years, the Farm Bill continues to adapt legislation in areas such as energy, conservation, nutrition, and rural development.
Another important issue is the current health care reform, which is struggling to keep up with the increasing number of illnesses due to this epidemic. Our government also has a large influence on the crops produced in the United States via financial subsidies. Social, the way in which people's interactions with each other affect their lifestyles and their equality of access to food and resources. Before trade specialization, access to food was based on fitness and physical ability. Major events such as the Greek Olympics idealized athleticism and fitness for males. Rulers such as Dionysus II set a precedent for weight as a social indicator. Colonialism brought people into contact with different cultures, and in America, it required a great amount of physical activity to develop the mostly undeveloped land. Agrarian lifestyles dominated until the Industrial Revolution, when social phenomena like the Roaring Twenties, professional entertainment, and technological advancements like the automobile and diet pills occurred. Cultural the framework for everyday living, including media, expectations for normal behavior, and social standards. Trade specialization marked the birth of two separate cultures, manual versus professional laborers. These cultures developed their own ideals for fashion, body image, and entertainment, as well as food. Eating out became popular in the late 18th century. As the Industrial Revolution increased the amount of food advertisement, national standards for weight and diet were established. During the 1920s, interest in physical activity decreased as the country relaxed from war. In the 1930s, nourishment took priority over exercise during the Great Depression, and in 1998, obesity was declared an epidemic. An epidemic is something that affects a large number of individuals within a community or population. The term sedentary generation has been used to describe the first part of the 21st century, mainly because this generation has an unrealistic expectation of body image, yet refuses to consistently remain active. Economic the way in which people are driven by profit and technology, causing environmental, social, and biological concerns to be sacrificed. Trade specialization, expansion, and population increase led to the development of major megacities such as Rome, London, and Alexandria. In the 1500s, the triangle trade brought slaves to America and Caribbean regions and provided a source of export, and therefore profit. In the 1800s, due to mass production, the Industrial Revolution allowed for foods such as candies, soda, and canned food to be provided at a lower price. The 20th century was a time for the development of frozen food, the first modern grocery store, the explosion of food advertisement, and America's first drive through Today, companies are driven to produce synthetic foods because they are cost-efficient, but given the rates of disease and declining diet, there is also a large market for preventative medicines, diet pills, and vitamins. So where does this leave us today? Where do we go from here so we can continue a quality of life that protects our bodies, beliefs, and our planet? How do we convince companies, elected officials, community members, friends, and family to take ownership of the problems we face? If we don't work to change these factors, we will be creating the first generation in U.S. history that will have a life expectancy shorter than their parents. We will continue to create a medical community that is focused on healing those that are sick instead of preventing illness, and we will create a food system that no longer has any nutritional value. So get involved. Get engaged. Start local by supporting farmers and businesses that buy and sell local. Be an advocate in your community for access to real food and safe places to play. Change school policies and work with local restaurants to revise their menu. Together we can create sustainable community change for healthier lifestyles.